So I wrote Happier Than God as an antidote to the uh, film and the book, which uh, did not contain what I felt was a sufficient amount of data about this thing that we call the energy or the law of attraction. Because we're discussing here God. The energy of attraction is a manifestation of God. The energy of attraction is a tool with two handles, one in your hand and one in God's hand, if you please. Or if you wish to rephrase it, one in your little hand and one in your big hand. Because when I refer to God, I refer to big you, as opposed to little you. So the energy of attraction is the energy that is. It's the only energy that is. It's the primal essence. It's God itself, if you please. And it is a tool which the individuated aspect of God, known as you, may use at will. But you must use it in a particular way for it to be maximally effective. The energy of attraction becomes maximally effective when it is used for the purpose for which it was intended. And the purpose for which it was intended is to create peace, joy, love, and harmony in the lives of all people, collectively and yours individually, in that order. Now, the last three words I spoke will change your entire understanding of how the energy of attraction can most effectively be used. And those three words are the three words that are missing from the secret. So I'll say it to you again. The purpose of the law of attraction is the same purpose as life itself. It is to produce the fullest expression and the possibility of that of what everyone is. It is to create peace, joy, love, and harmony, and the fullest expression of the true identity of everyone and of the self in that order. And regrettably, people who learn about the law of attraction as if it were a standalone tool, a standalone device, could be led to believe that its purpose is to produce whatever outcome you want to experience in your life exclusive of anything else and not connected to anything else. And I'm here to tell you that when we use the energy of attraction for the exclusive purpose of producing outcomes in our own individual lives, we have taken something enormously huge, something unfathomably magnificent and reduced it down to minuscule proportions such as to virtually nullify the possibility of magnificent outcome. You know, to think of how minuscule you as an individuated aspect of divinity are in the overall scheme of things and ignore, if nothing else, the other six billion people on the planet. And to imagine that the other six billion people on the planet have nothing to do with you and are not connected to you in any way. Uh, to do that seems to be to step aside from a most fundamental rock bed truth that drives the engine of the human experience.
So what I'm trying to say is that the most effective way to use the energy of attraction is to use it in a way that is applicable to the you that you really are rather than the you that you think you are. That is, the unified you that is one with everything rather than the individuated you that imagines itself to be separate from everything. Therefore, the first step of the 17 steps to become happier than God is to bring an end to separation theology. We'll discuss this later tonight when I go through the entire 17 steps, but remember that we landed there just now. To bring an end to separation theology. That is the thought that we are here and God is there.